bottom. All right, so I got my magnetic field here. I got a proton cruising in this, this way. And as soon as it enters the magnetic field, <coughs> it's gonna be forced downwards. Now, it's not gonna immediately just go, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do that maneuver because it's a force being applied to it. So what's gonna to happen to the, so it's going to start to move this way now. Which way will it be forced now? I wasn't sure which way you were pointing, not straight down. We now have velocity in this direction. My magnetic field is out. That's a bit extreme on how far. We'll try that one again. My velocity is more closer to that direction. Magnetic field is coming out. What would be the direction of the force now? Correct. Yep. Uh, I, I think, yes, Ian, yeah. There's Down a, in relation to okay. the perpendicular. So the force would now be in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, the force, remember that the cross product, you end up with a, a vector that's perpendicular to them. So the force is going to be perpendicular to the velocity the entire time. Where have we seen that before? In 151. All right, I'm just only guessing here that all of you know the answer and you're just letting someone else give the answer to, to show off. Torque? Not torque. The force is perpendicular to the motion. Part of me wants to wait it out, and part of me wants to spoil it. If I'm moving along and someone and then there's a force in the direction I'm moving, what's going to happen? If I'm walking this way and someone pushes me in the direction I'm moving. direction and somebody pushes the kicks the ball in the direction it's already moving what's going to happen to the ball yes speed up if the ball is going this way and someone kicks it in the other direction what's going to happen to it in the, that immediate moment you know slow down yeah if the ball's going this way and someone pushes it in that direction perpendicular to the motion what's going to happen going to go that way, but the motion from this direction is going to remain the same. All right. So, if the force is constant in that direction, yeah, or just a very quick one. Okay, so it changes direction. That's ultimately what I'm going for. Thus, steering wheel, flashback, steering wheels and is a, an accelerator because it changes direction. What we have here is a force that's perpendicular to the motion, so it's changing direction. If it's not speeding up or slowing down, because velocity is not changing here, if it's not speeding up or slowing down, what is the path that this proton will take? Circular. Yes. So if a proton is traveling in a circular orbit or a circular motion, what kind of motion is that? There we go. Yes. This is a centripetal problem. So from a from a Newton's second law point of view, 
if I wanted to figure out the acceleration of this proton, well, I know F equals MA. The force is the force from the from the magnetic field. <coughs> so the force, well, let's make that direction. And so I end up with QVD is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. Oh, actually, let's do this to solve for R. That cancels out with one of those. So that cancels out with one of those. Um, solving for R. R, that's an R right there. R is equal to, that comes up, these come down, M, V over Q. From an experimentalist point of view, I control the magnetic field. I adjust some dials and I can make the magnetic field stronger or weaker. So B is something under my control. V, I can control the speed of the particles by having some sort of filter, anything within a certain range, I can aim towards my magnetic field. So I have control over these two things. What I don't have necessarily control of, well, I potentially I have some control over the particle itself. In this case, I made it a proton. But if I'm doing a high energy experiment where basically you take a bunch of protons or whatever you happen to be shooting and you shoot it at some target, there's so much energy there in the, because, well, jumping ahead just a little bit, I can't exceed the speed of light, so I can keep pumping more and more energy into it. It's not necessarily going to get faster. It's going to get more massive. And when it collides into a, some sort of, we'll just say a piece of carbon, there's so much energy there that you get the shower of particles coming out. And to identify the particles that are coming out, I can have a filter to control for the speed, I can control the magnetic field, and so I can identify the particle based upon this mass to charge ratio. And then you set up a computer program to run through the analysis because we're talking trillions of potential events. So the proton's gonna move cruise around like that. Suppose instead, it's an electron that gets shot into. What's changing here? Where? Oh. All right, well, where does it change in the, this part? Okay, so that becomes negative, that becomes positive. And so which way is the electron gonna move? And so when I'm looking at a, trying to identify a particle based upon this, I shoot it through the magnetic field. If it bends one way, it's negative, bends the other way, it's positive. I look at the radius and I can come up with a value for the mass to charge and so I can have a pretty good idea of what the particle is. Questions to hear? Because we're about to make it look more complicated. More simple, it depends on the way you think. All right, so that's the force on a charge. Suppose I have a whole bunch of charges moving. What do we call that? derivation, so I have, I, I'm going to ignore the vector aspect for right now and then throw it back in. So I have this charge that's going at some particular speed, V, 
Well, V is just dx dt. So if I have a whole bunch of charges traveling over some amount of time, oh, that's just current right there. Dx is basically how far it's traveling, uh, or how much of the wire is in the magnetic field. And so we have a force on a charge, uh, sorry, a force on a current in a magnetic field. We did throw the vector piece into it. I is a scalar, but L cross D. Where the direction of that length is the direction of the current flow. <coughs> So I have a magnetic field, in theory, coming out of the board. I have a wire running like this with a current flowing down. The current's flowing downwards, magnetic field is coming out. What, in which direction will that wire be forced? said the same direction, but how'd you get that? The magnetic field pointing out, yep. and the current is going down. Ah, what mistake? What's the mistake there? Okay, magnetic field going out, current flowing down, therefore going that way. Well, the, the direction of L is the direction of the current flow. Uh, so it's not that issue. Well, let me ask, Daniel, you, you had, your thumb was pointing that way and then you flipped over. I, I, I meant to point this way the whole time. Oh, okay. How did you get your thumb pointing that way? That was probably an accident. Because like the whole time I was thinking about it, I was thinking my hand is facing this way with my thumb towards me, and then my fingers would have to cross this way for the magnetic field. All right. All right. So here's here's the issue. Uh, What's the issue? Uh, did them backwards. It's the currents first. Yeah. It's L cross D. He did D cross L. L is downwards. V is out. Thumb points that way. This wire here, I'm going to put that down for the writing on it. <clears throat> the wire is going to be forced in that direction. And I'm not going to take the time to go get the props, but uh, you would notice that the it's visible if you have enough current. Let's just go ahead and do a number Put some numbers here. So let's make our B field uh, two Tesla, and we'll set up a coordinate system I, J, K. I think I said it, but in case I didn't, this is a right-handed coordinate system. And so the distance from here to here will make three meters, and we'll have a four ampere current flowing through. So plugging into the equation, the force, which is a vector, is equal to 4 amperes times L, which is negative 3 meters j hat, 
cross B, which is 2 Tesla Kn. So the math piece, got 4 times 3 times 2. That's 44. Ampere meters Teslas, otherwise known as Newton. And the direction? Well, I got J cross K. J is up, K is out. So J cross K is I. That negative sign doesn't go away, so negative I I. To the left, as we predict by hand. Questions to hear. How did you get the negative? Uh, because I hat, because the current's flowing down, L hat would be downwards in the negative J hat direction. Okay. That's why it's negative. Gotcha. So we've got force on a charge, force on a current. Two equations right there. How do you create a magnetic field? Well, to create a magnetic field, all you need more than just love, a moving charge. So magnetic fields are created by a moving charge. And so parenthetically, this is something for a couple chapters from now, you know, next week, uh, or a changing electric field. Just sort of a, a sneak peek at what's coming up. This was one of this is the beginning of Maxwell's great contribution towards all of us. It's the final. It's the major piece of evidence that tells us that electric fields actually are real. It's not just a math thing. So if I have a positive charge that's moving to the right, it is creating a magnetic field. How you tell the direction of that magnetic field is with another right hand rule. So if the proton's traveling that way, you put your thumb in the direction of the, of the charge, of the velocity, your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So on top, it is coming out of the board. Underneath, it's going into the board. In front of it, it's going down. Behind it, it's going up. It's, it, it's a circular thing. So let's combine that with something else we had just done. If this proton, if I have a magnetic field that's coming out of the board, and the proton enters it, enters into that. Well, the proton enters, I know that it's the magnetic field from the proton is coming out of the board and going into the board below it. So as the proton enters here, I get the boost up here and I get into the board down there. So where is the magnetic field stronger, above the proton or below the proton? I heard above there and... I said below. Magnetic fields coming out of the page up here at the red, from the external source, I got these red magnetic fields coming this way. From the proton, I have magnetic fields coming in the same direction above it. Below it, red, it's coming out. Green, going in. Which is stronger? Same direction, opposite direction. It 
If I had a box with a force of five newtons pushing on it and three newtons pushing on it, or I had a box with five newtons pushing on it and three newtons pushing on it that way, which is gonna create a stronger force. Same direction, newtons are vectors. Direction matter, you're adding them. So the magnetic field is stronger above because both magnetic fields, the external one and the one from the proton are both coming out. So they strengthen each other. Below, it is weaker. Charges or currents or wires will move towards the weaker magnetic field when you get the combinations like this. A different way of coming up with the exact same answer that the proton is going to curve that way. And here's yet another way of doing it. The Sten gun. Have you ever seen uh, World War II British commandos? They got the Sten gun. You got the basically you're holding it right here, holding it on the side, and then bolts come out on one side. The Sten gun. I got multiple fingers right here. These multiple fingers, well, magnetic field, you generally don't have just a single line. You got multiple lines. So these fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. Think of the proton as the bullet. Well, it's going this way, comes out the finger, or the finger gun. My bullet's going that way, my magnetic field's going that way. My thumb points in the direction of the force, downwards. Or electrons, or negative charges, you just have to know, oh, negative, it's the other way. An electron traveling to the right, Remember, we dealt with this with current. Electron traveling that way, mathematically, is the same as a proton traveling that way. So if a proton, so an electron going this way, I can treat it as a proton going that way, magnetic field is out, forces up, the electron will curl upwards. The strength of that magnetic field, 